All right, so let's now study one more application of integration. What we're going to learn in this video is how to calculate the average value of a continuous function over an interval using integration. So let me start with a motivational example. Suppose that you're moving with a certain velocity function, say v of t is equal to 1 minus e to the minus t, and then you start at t equals to 0. What is your average velocity after 5 seconds? That's a good question. So let's try to calculate that. So the velocity function here, if you sketch the graph, will look like something like this. Now t equals to 5 is here. I could certainly calculate the instantaneous velocity at t equals to 5 just by substituting t equals 5 in my expression. But I want, what I want is the average velocity between t equals 0 and t equals to 5. But I certainly know how to calculate that. The average velocity will be given by the distance that I've covered over these 5 seconds divided by the time interval, which will be just 5 seconds in this case. All right, and I actually also know how to calculate the distance because the distance, if you know the velocity function, the distance is given by the area under the curve, right? So I could rewrite that as being the integral between 0 and 5 of my velocity function. That gives me the distance that I've covered, divided by the time interval, which in this case is just 5 minus 0. Okay, and now I can just plug in the velocity function and calculate what I get. So I get 1 over 5 integral 0 to 5, 1 minus e to the minus t dt which I can certainly integrate. I get 1 over 5, integral of 1 is t, integral of minus e to the minus t is just going to be plus e to the minus t between 0 and 5. Plugging in the numbers, I get 5 plus e to the minus 5 minus 0 minus 1, which gives me 1 over 5 times 4 plus e to the minus 5. Now this is the average velocity over these 5 seconds. You see this is, just a, this is just a number, it's not a function anymore. This is really the average velocity over this particular time interval. Okay, so this was pretty easy, but what we've done here is completely general. So let's try to summarize what we've done. So in general, the average value of a continuous function f over an interval a to b is always given by the exact same expression that we use, namely 1 over b minus a, this was the time interval, times the integral between a and b of f of x dx, this was uh, what I call the distance covered in the case where we had the velocity function here. This is how we define the average val value of a continuous function. Okay, and to end this video, what I want to do is give you a kind of a sketch of a proof of why this is really the average value of the function. So let's get started. So suppose that I have some arbitrary function y equals f of x here between two points a and b here. Okay, and then I want to calculate the average value of my function over this interval. So the idea here is to do exactly the same as we've done for all applications of integrations. We want to slice the problem. So what I'm going to do here is basically uh, divide the domain, so divide the interval between a and b into n little uh, subintervals, all of the same width. So the width will be delta x, which is b minus a, the total length of the interval, divided by the number of subintervals. So what I'm doing here in the picture is I'm dividing this into something like n subintervals like this. All right, so here I'm going to call this point here x1, x2, and so on. All the way this will be x n minus 1 and the end point here will be xn. This would be x0. Okay, now I can approximate, so I can approximate, oh, not much battery, that's fine, we'll survive. I can approximate the average value f average here by taking the average value of the value of the function here at the right endpoints of my interval all the way to f to the x, f at x n, right? So I could write the approximation for my uh, average value as being f of x1 plus so on plus f of x n. And then, of course, I need to divide by the number of values here, which turns out to be n. 
Okay, so that's a good approximation. In fact, I could rewrite it, can replace n here by my expression here. So n here will be equal to b minus a uh, over delta x. So in other words, I get delta x over b minus a times the sum between i equals 1 and n of f of xi, which would be a good approximation for the average value. But now to get the exact value of the average value of the function, what I want to do is send the number of intervals to go to infinity. So I want to take the limit as n goes to infinity. Right? This is always what we do. So we first get a good approximation for n sub intervals, and then we take the limit n going to infinity, and that would be the actual uh, average value of the function. So here probably I should have something like, I don't know, how can I write that for the approximation? Maybe I should just write this like this. But now the actual value of the average function here will be the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression. So I'm going to rewrite it as 1 over b minus a times the sum. I'm just going to bring the delta x in there. And now if you look back at a long time ago, you will realize that if I bring that in here, the expression here is just the limit of a Riemann sum, which becomes a definite integral, and I end up with the statement that the average value will be 1 over b minus a times the definite integral between a and b of the function f of x dx, which is exactly the formula that I have here. Okay, so this was just a, this is really how you would prove that or define the average value of a function. Uh, and, and it works in general for an arbitrary continuous function. We're going to do more examples of that, of how to calculate the average values of functions in class.